Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. Um, we've got a kit in front of us here, but this video is a book review, as you've probably seen from the title. So if you remember, a few weeks ago, I was recommended this by somebody who told me it was a bargain on Amazon, it was like 26 quid or something. So I bought it, reviewed it, and fell in love with it. Richard Alexander got in touch, him of Wingnut Wings, yes, and said, I would suggest you get this book, Nigel, because it's absolutely brilliant. It's written by Ray Rimmel and Richard Alexander. I reviewed this book and you all went out and bought it in your droves. In fact, for a period of time, they sold out. Um, it's a wonderful book. It's absolutely brilliant. It covers the 30 second scale kit in high detail. It goes into the development of the kit with, with Wingnut Wings and then the sort of errors and stuff that have been changed or missed by men. And it goes into the, you know, the, the decals in the kit aren't very good. As we all know, Wingnut Wings instructions, probably the best instruction manuals in the world for any plastic model kit of any country. And this, basically the main kit doesn't have the beautiful Wingnut Wing instructions, obviously. This book is almost like your Wingnut Wing instructions for that kit. So, you know, you can still get this kit fairly reasonably. It's about 50 odd quid at the moment. Um, maybe 60, I don't know. But... Uh, it was for a while it was extremely cheap so you could get that and the book together for less than the price of a wing in fact you still can because the price of wingnut wing kits as we all know has gone silly so if you're going to build that kit i would thoroughly recommend this book and i would also now recommend this book because this is now volume two um i've got a bit of piece bit of script to, to read out and i've highlighted some bits and pieces so i'm going to just go through what the book actually contains. This is written by Ray, so obviously it's going to be brilliant. Um, so it's uh, Fokker F1DR1 Volume 2 by Ray Rimmel with Richard Alexander. Um, and it concludes their in-depth coverage of the legendary Fokker DR1 triplane flown by many of Germany's leading World War I fighter pilots, including Werner Voss, Ernst Uday, Paul Baumer, it might be Udet, I don't know, Paul Baumer, and the von Riffhofen brothers. Um, so this one covers building and finishing the 130, uh, 132nd and the 124th kits because some of you may be aware Wingnut Wings were also going to produce a 124th version of this because it's such a small model um, and obviously Meng took that one on as well and produced it as a kit. So it was released, the kit was released in 2020, 2021. So in here the book represents the F1103-17 on the day Voss was shot down with revised colours and markings um, and weathering and, and repairs all supported by archive photos and detailed captions. So Ray is forever sort of updating his, uh, his, his models and everything. Um, in the book Ray builds two 132nd scale Meng DR1 kits, an early version in the markings of DR120417 and a late version flown by Yasta14 in 1918. Step-by-step -step photos feature in each guide backed up by special archive photo sections, so that'll be really nice to see. Um, we've got from the Vintage Aviator Limited in New Zealand, that's the parent company to Wingnut Wings, uh, there are great close-ups close of reproduction of the Rhone and Oberussel rotary engines providing vital reference. Um, the 124 scale kit is given in-depth treatment by Ray in a 25-page heavily illustrated build log, adding additional detail and modifications as required. The author, all, the author also shows how to apply commercially available street decals with ease. So that would be uh, nice to see. That's this, um, this street camouflage and everything. Um, and also saying they've been very generously uh, given some um, information from leading era historians. And uh, the 76 page book concludes with an illustrated addenda to volume one, along with further aspects of this classic aircraft hitherto unrecorded. So basically in the back of this book, we've got a addenda for this one. So they're always finding out more and more stuff, I guess. I guess it's very, very difficult when you don't have you know, much around, no colour photography, and it, probably not a lot of documentation existed even back then, but now it's probably even less, but it'll be coming out of people's attics and stuff. So, um, the book is designed for serious modellers, um, it's a vital modelling resource, and it's also aimed at World War I enthusiasts, historians, flying scale fans, artists, and repro builders alike. So, in the book we've got a foreword from Richard Alexander, and I would just like to read this. If you want to fast forward, by all means do. 
but this really does this forward by Richard Alexander really tells us a lot so um he's saying in here it seems like it was only yesterday that I was writing the foreword to Ray Rimmel's first Fokker Triplay modelling special but it has been just one month short of two years and a very busy couple of years they have been yep he's got Qatari models now and he's been very busy with that um, Ray has used this time wisely to produce, the, to produce the wonderful volume of information that you hold in your hands. Here it is. Uh, while the initial title primarily focused on one thirty-second scale Fokker DR1 models, the second covers the Meng 124th Fokker DR1 in detail. The kit is yet another model designed at Wingnut Wings by Darren Mildenhall, beautifully tooled by Meng and fortuitously released by them for all of us to enjoy. As far as I'm concerned, this model represents the culmination of a century of research into the Fokker DR1, which combined with Darren's design and Meng's high quality tooling provides the modeler with a pleasurable building experience and an amazingly accurate model. Many details not practical to include in the previous 132nd scale model were incorporated into this larger version. While this book is obviously going to primarily be of interest to builders of the Meng 124th kit, I trust that the increased level of detail combined with Ray's ability to find and add refinements ensures that the book will be a valuable resource for builders of the Fokker DR1 in any scale, maybe even for full-size replicas and aviation enthusiasts alike. The last paragraph mostly echoes that in Volume 1 because the sentiment still holds true. In addition to be able to garner appropriate credit for Darren's dedicated work on this model, I think it would be remiss of me to not thank a few other people who have made all this possible. Primarily Peter Jackson, who so generously allowed us all to share in his passion for World War I aviation and models. The highly dedicated team members who contributed so much to Wingnut Wings over the years, and of course you. Without your support, Wingnut Wings would not have been able to release as many models as we did. And last, but by no means least, I would very much like to thank Ray Rimmel. It is entirely probable that Wingnut Wings, and therefore these very Fokker Triplay models, would never have existed in the first place without Ray's tireless efforts in promoting and supporting World War I aircraft modelling over so many years. And that was written by Richard Alexander himself in May 2023. So if you listen to that, thank you very much for listening. I thought that is beautifully written and it's a great sort of, you know, reminder of those wonderful days when we had wing that wings. Anyway, so we've got the author's introduction here. And basically what he's saying in here is a few little reference bits and pieces. So remember, we're looking at the 124th and the 132nd scale kit. We're going to be upgrading from the, the volume one. Wherever you see a reference here, as in reference one in blue, OK, this is referring to a book by Greg Van Vingarden, Fokker DR1 Jagdstaffeln, and that's reference one. So you'll see sometimes in the book you'll see an, uh, a, a, a reference to, you know, here, reference one in blue. OK, and then when you see it in black, reference two, um, that's the Fokker triplane by Alex Imri, Imri. OK, so that's what that's looking at. Um, you will also see, during the references, there will be numbers, part numbers, kit part numbers in red or green. Red means it's a 132nd scale kit, green means it's 124th. Okay, so as we said, first, first page of the book, we're looking into um, the Fokker F1 10317 as flown by Werner Voss. You can also get this kit here. This is the Encore e-models kit. Um, I'm not even sure it's still available. This is something I've been working on for a long, long time, um, but it has lots and lots of resin in it. In fact, it's got a resin figure. It's got photo etching and everything. And you can see we've got resin engine, resin ailerons, resin cowling, photo etching there. And it's fantastic, but it still needs more. It needs more. It's, it's nothing like as nice as the wing that wing kit. And when you see the amount of resin that's in there, you can see the errors that are in the rodent kit. But um, there's also a lot of debate in there about colours and they, they actually go into the debate themselves in that kit. So this is the one, um, this is the one as built by Ray and you can see he's got a, a figure of Werner Voss there. Very, very small these models. In fact, somebody commented they've built the main one. They can't believe how small it is, um, even compared to another World War I aircraft. So we've got a lovely picture there, beautiful picture of the model built up with the, uh, it looks like it's got a wooden um, propeller on there. We can see the very accurate looking uh, engine and cowling and everything, all oil stained and weathered and looking lovely. 
Um, and then going over the page is going into detail about things he's changed, correct colours, shading and everything, and everything that he's um, um, done, you know, on, on this model. Um, so whether Meng ever get round to releasing the Winged Wings Design F1 early production DR1 in 124 scale remains to be seen. Meantime, there's always Aviatic with their resin decal sets. There are two versions available containing a laser printed decals for either unbleached linen backed or blue backed stree patterns together with interior fuselage elements and sharp screen printed facial markings to adorn the cowling. So Aviatic, get on over to Hanant's or get to the Aviatic website yourself and just have a look at what they make. It's it's absolutely immense, the quality of their stuff. I've actually emailed them today because I can see you can get the wood grain decals from Aviatic on Hanant's website, but it doesn't make any mention of what size they are. And they're about £16, so I'd like to know what size they are and give them a go. And I've just actually just put up part two of my wood graining video now. So we can see here we've got original photographs of the aircraft, which are absolutely amazing. Obviously in the day, only available in black and white. But you can see the um, the markings down here, the staining and everything, and this beautiful streaked finish that they used for camouflage. It looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? And you can see here, going over the page, um, this is now... Which aircraft? This is not... Is this the same? Yes, it is the same aircraft. So it's probably the same model in the different uh, guys, and he's got a camera guy stood there and everything. You can see here some real photographs from the period. Beautifully built model, absolutely gorgeous. And in the background there, you've got the beautiful Aviatic shed, which I believe is no longer available. And for some reason, we've got a fin there. Look, there's a fin up on the corner of that roof. <laughs> I have never noticed that before. Right, something else they've done in this book. All of these images are in 30 second scale. So very nicely done. So you can see how small the actual model is. You know, when you compare that to a 30 second scale Spitfire, you can see it's a very small, aircraft indeed and then we're going through and as you can see we've got red part numbers here which is the 30 second scale kit and then we've got the green numbers here which is the 24 scale kit so what's really really nice about this if you want to build that model from either the 30 second or the 24 scale kit Ray is giving you the actual part numbers in the kit so he's not telling you to use the such and such propeller he's telling you to use this propeller which is that part number which is great for people like me that are a bit thick and, uh, and don't necessarily want to go into all the massive hours of research to find out which propeller is which as far as i know it's it's b1 and b2 on the sprue um so here we've got another one here in the um from April 1918. Again, we've got references now, reference one, reference two, to those books we talked about earlier. Um, absolutely stunning. Reference to part numbers again. Really, really nice. And again here, lovely looking uh, image there. Lots of different colours going on. I bet there's been some controversy about whether that's yellow or if it's tan or whatever it is. We can see here some guys, hands in pockets. This one with his hands behind his back. Stand to attention, sir. And then here we've got the, the guys stood around the aircraft. Very, very nice. Beautiful colours. Um, um, sorry, beautiful image. Not beautiful colours. There are no colours. It's all black and white. And you can hear, unfortunately, a crashed aircraft. But there's a lovely image there of the machine guns. Again, we've got all the references being called out. Again, we can see here. Beautiful image of the machine guns. Again, another one here. This is a nice looking image with the uh, invasion stripes on it. Just joking, guys. And then... Um, and then some more black and white images, some more people stood around, and then a few of them together there in, a, in what looks like quite a muddy field with a shed behind. And then we're into the modelling. So this is um, this is going to be the first project in the book. So this is Fokker DR1 204 17, February 1918, uh, phase two arrival. Um, the unit's first four dry deckers were decorated in the familiar black and white livery before being assigned to a quartet of experienced pilots who lose little time applying their own distinctive personal markings. There we go. I suppose they were allowed to do that, you know, because he's like covered up the registration numbers and stuff. Uh, so here we are. We're going into building up the um, the uh, the cockpit. You can see in here, this is all the additional information you need for um, for the kit, which you don't get in the instructions. You've got the, the rigging here in the cockpit and everything. And here we are painting all the wood and everything there. 
um, and then it goes by step by step through the instructions, fuselage, attaching cockpit inside, fuselage, fuselage accessories, going all the way through and then adding these decals to the wings. And then we've got some more decal application going on here and we've got the stripes going on. And you can see with these models, it's a lot, a lot of work is in the decals or indeed, if you feel like up to it, you could do it with the painting. Um, here he's talking about a spar inspection panel. Um, representing the spar cutout on Meng's 132nd scale upper wing is fairly undemanding. Start by drilling right through the wing. Okay, so obviously they've just got a moulded in slot, have they? Start by drilling right through the wing, just inside the corners of the raised outlines, and then a series of holes in between to allow the tip of the large couple to be um, to be pushed through. He uses a Swan Morton 10A, the same as me, to remove the unwanted plastic as shown in photo 15.1. Which is exactly what I did on part one, cockpit build one on the A20A I did. On the A20G, sorry. Uh, the entire section is removed and later cleaned up with files to provide a crisp rectangular aperture. Plug the underside cutout with a suitable section of 40 thou plastic card, pressing it downward so that the lower surface is flush with the lower wing. Don't put too much Tamiya extra thin because it will capillary under. Um, once the glue is fully set, the new plate can be blended into the wing's undersurface until it disappears using filler. Upper regions are painted red-brown, Tamiya XF9 or Humble 73 before adding appropriate decals over a clear gloss undercoat. On road and DR1 kits, the operation is made simpler for having upper wing panels in two halves. However, the undersurface panel outline is too low and needs resizing further forward. Once this is cut through, it is faced underneath with a section of 10 thigh plastic card to represent the spar as shown in photo 15 dash three so to 15 dash three so there we go so get the book read all that look at it it's, it's full of information like that that's the uh, that's the beauty of this book and, and volume one um, so here we are we've got wheel shields first painted semi-gloss black and then covered with hgw discs from their 132nd scale dr1 mask set so there you go hgw do make masks as well they don't just do seat belts they do lots and lots of stuff and here you can see we've got the model being built up. It's in pieces. It stood in its wooden shed for effect. And we've got the fuselage there now on stands. So that's looking, uh, that's looking quite good. Um, here we can see the model again in, level that, in, in front of that lovely shed. And we've got the dog here. That's, uh, that's his little dog. So you can see we've, Ray has modelled the dog sat there with the, um, with the aircraft. And then we've got some more notes about the aircraft and some of the crew and everything. And there's a pilot there sat proudly on his airplane. Now this, the TVAL Rotary Club, this is the Oberussel UR10, 110 horsepower, blimey, surprised they ever got off the ground. Um, this is the Vintage Avia Aviator Limited, which is Peter Jackson's other company, uh, where he restores, builds, remanufactures, whatever, World War I aircraft and Lancasters as it happens. Um, so they've actually recreated the rotary engine here remember this is not a radial this is a rotary with this engine the propeller is bolted to the actual engine and the engine spins with the propeller in something like a Corsair or a P47 the engine is called a radial it has a shaft that spins the propeller the engine is stationary so uh, remember that um, so when you are doing your weather remember all that you wouldn't have like grease and everything building up in here it's all getting thrown out so there'd be streaks but it will all be thrown out remember so there we go. Some lovely images there of the engine. Here it is, all the inlet manifolds and everything. Very, very nice indeed. Um, and then we've got an ad here for Doug Craner, who's an artist and sculptor doing figures. And you can see here, Museum of Aircraft Construction and Technical History, the Fokker Museum in Germany. So there's a little advert for them. Another 30 second scale image, very nice. And then we've got another build here. So this is a Fokker DR1. 21st of April 1918, another dog there, look, Ray's obviously a fan of the dogs. And then we've got uh, some more images from some different um, different time periods. And we've got here some, uh, some more reference material from Ray being advertised there. And then more images, April 18, April 18, June 18. And I was trying to find reference to this picture and I couldn't find anything referring to this picture um, I don't have all day to sit and really, really study these books, which is why I just have to sort of whip through them, really. But you can see here is Mein Dreidecker Fokker S21 or 521, whatever that is. Yeah, 521 that is. And he's actually coloured that in red. So 
I wonder if that is actually written by um, by him himself. So here we go. There's another project. So this is uh, sorry that other one, the red one, wasn't a project. This one is. So this is another build, and as you can see, it's all looking very very nice indeed. Um, has he painted on those stripes or has he used decals? I'm sure it's going to be decals. It will tell you in there when you get your book. You can read it all up yourself. But uh, beautifully done. German crosses. Got the red band there. Got some um, wing detail going on there. Beautiful gun detail. Um, easy line rigging is already in place. I, I use easy line as well. Um, I'm just wondering what these guns are. It doesn't actually say. Doesn't say. I wonder if they're gas patch guns or what they are. Um, but here you can see there's, there's a sprue, a sprue there, and it's telling us something. It's got brass legs in the undercarriage, which is going to be far superior to um, to having the the plastic stubs on there. And here we are going through, going through the build, all the stitching underneath. I remember seeing something about adding plastic car to the bottom of the aircraft. Maybe that's on the twenty fourth scale build. Um, You've got some more photographs here. You can see this. This is this different cowling with the uh, opened up uh, holes. Some lovely oil streaking images there. Again, beautiful image of the, the cooling jacket on the gun. And then here we've got centre spread. So you can see you've got some lovely images, beautiful um, period photographs. And we've got all the different scales here. We've got 48 scale, 70 second scale, 30 second scale. So you can see how tiny this aircraft is. You look at that next to my hand. It's absolutely tiny. So there we go. And then more and more images going through. We've got another crashed aircraft there. And here we start. We've got some more images there. Um, goodbye to all that blue, Max. <laughs> and then here we've got the Fokker DR1 in 124th scale. And um, this is going to be a nice detailed build. So here he's talking about the seat belts. And in fact, you've got the PE seat belts there with the flat springs, get rid of them. Or what he's talking about here is get the Kits World 3D printed seat belts. So here you can see a, a real uh, reproduction seat belt here going on about modifying the, um, the wall behind the pilot seat. So you've got the framing around there and then the canvas in the middle. He's giving you indications of all the colours to use. He's talking about a, a, a paint from something called Kits World. Mr. Kit, sorry, Mr. Kit BCO5. Um, but I think you could use XF55 deck tan on there. Um, and then going through the build step by step, doing some modifications, adding some detail, all bits and pieces, everything step by step, and displaying it all the way through every single little bit, removing bits of raised plastic there, adding some plastic rod there. Um, and then you've got here, you've got the, the actual the frames here built up adding the painted on detail and then we've got here he's got a 3d printed um, control stick from Aviatic I'm guessing um, I'm guessing that's an Aviatic control stick yeah it's probably an Aviatic control stick and then here we've got a, 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 an image of a genuine reproduction um, and this is apparently as close as you're going to get to the real thing so you can see you've got that lovely green color on there see the wooden floor Got the the place where the foot where his um, foot rests are. It's got some levers over there and his control stick there, and then you can see here all of that replicated in the actual model itself. And here we've got the rigging added to the sides. Again, here we've got a period image by the look of it of all of that. You can see all the machined aluminium, all the turned aluminium on there. And here again, there's the actual kit, and here's the reproduction stuff. Very, very nice indeed. As I say, this is like your wing nut wings instruction book. And here we've got the turned, the machine aluminium uh, firewall there, engine mount added. And then here looking down into the cockpit, looking at the tail. And then looking at this um, this fabrication over the front of the cockpit and this on the centre wing. You can see here's a real one with all the machine finish on it. And then building up the wings, adding in the, the, the doped colour. Um, and then adding in your uh, your German crosses and everything, fitting the ailerons. And then we've got more work on the fuselage here, doing the cowling, that upper wing area, doing some chipping, adding some scratches, and then adding those streak decals from um, Aviatic. Um, very, very pretty, very nice. Aviatic actually make these sets specifically for particular kits. So they'll do, they'll do a specific set for a rodent kit and a specific set for the main kit. So um, 
worth uh, having a look. The Hanlon's website has them all listed down there, or you can go to the Avi Aviatic website itself. Um, more decals being added here. Beautiful work here on the underside and the tail planes and everything. As I say, I remember seeing somewhere where he talked about actually using 5,000 plastic card underneath to represent the ribbing, and the, I seem to have gone past it. Um, here we are here adding decals to the sides. You've got another ad there for the Doug Kramer for figures. Um, and then adding some stenciling detail and everything onto the model. Coming over the page, more stenciling detail, painting the little sub-assemblies and stuff. Adding some pipes and drain pipes and stuff. Very, very detailed explanations in here. It's worth getting the book and looking through. Um, beautiful machine guns there. As you can see straight away, 24th scale, it's just really, really all sort of coming to life because it's all so much bigger and you can get all the smaller details in that wouldn't be practical as Richard was saying in the forward um, some more details going in here again beautiful views of those machine guns here's some real views there's a gun sight on the top he's got an exclamation mark there again we've got the reproduction guns here and and more reproduction photos here period photos of some flares is that flares by looking at it? yes flares um, and then we've got some more images of the model underneath with some some sort of attachment points. And then here, um, although the plastic in the 124th is of superior quality to that of smaller kits, neither brittle nor prone to crack, the increased weight of the larger model warranted deployment of aircraft brass central struts for greater rigidity. That's interesting. As before, they required the excessive material being filed down from their upper regions, clamped in a vice between two cardboard buffers, whilst work ensued. Okay, interesting. I didn't know aircraft made struts. But, uh, worth looking into, I'll have to get some of them. Okay, these are the struts, so that's just the, um, what he's showing you here, this is just the top, and you've got to file away that big uh, leg in the middle. I shall have to order some of those struts up. Um, and then here, it looks like he's drilling out and he's gonna put brass in for the undercarriage legs by the look of it, or a tube or something. And then here we've got inside again, we've got the HGW um, masks for the inside and outside of the wheels. So he's using them. You can make your own with circle cutters and stuff. And then you've got the, uh, the wing fairing for the axle there. And then building up the engine, using cocktail sticks for something or other. Painting up the brass and having the black cylinders and everything. All nicely done. We've got the machined aluminium on there. Chipping and scratching on that cowling. You see so much of the engine is exposed underneath. It looks really nice. And then here we've got the um, images. You've got exclamation marks picking out on certain details. That's on the reproduction aircraft. Got the propeller here being painted. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's instructions in here how to paint the propeller. And here we've got the, uh, this is the sprue from the 124th kit, sprue H. It's going to have different cowlings and everything. Different cowlings, different propellers to enable you to do different models. And that's the thing. If you get the main kit, Meng probably won't know that that propeller goes with that cowling and that propeller goes with another cowling or that propeller goes with that cowling on a certain year and blah blah blah. This book will tell you all that and the Wingnut Wings instructions would have told you all that. Uh, the bracing wires, so he's fitting the bracing wires in here, you've got the turnbuckles in there as well. Very nice indeed. That's all looking very very nice and, and realistic. And under he underneath here we've got some turnbuckles in the undercarriage as well. And then here they are with the, with the finished model by the look of it. Looking very, very pretty. Very nice indeed. And that's another beauty of this model. You notice for a World War One aircraft there's hardly any rigging. So it's, uh, it's nice in that aspect because rigging scares people away. So here we've got some more images now. 30 second scale colour images. Um, and then we've got some black and white period photographs there. Different periods. Another crash one there unfortunately. There we go, more period images. That woodwork in the back of there looks great. More period images. And then here we've got the addendum to volume one. Um, so they're talking about a fuel drain pipe, the seat material, something about the guns here. And then they're carrying on over here, going on about the page. And then down in here, we've got the um, Alex Imry. This book is respectfully dedicated to Alex's memory. He was a tireless champion of the Fokker DR1 and its pilots. His meticulous researches into the aeroplane's development and combat service with its unique input from many surviving ex-Jester tri triplane flyers will be forever immortalised in his seminal work, the Fokker triplane, 
published in 1992, and that's the book that uh, is being referred to in here under reference one. So when you see reference, sorry, reference two, reference two, there you go, that's his book. So that's who he's dedicated this to. And then this is Ray himself, and he's written this in September 2023, so it's very, very recent. It's basically giving you the story of how he got into all this and how he got into Winged Up Wings and how the book became about and everything. And uh, very interesting reading there. And then here we've got a very, very interesting uh, couple of pages. And this is basically um, covering, where was it? It says, I read this on here. Here we go. Um, Janita Franzi, I hope I got your name right there, sorry, uh, provides port, starboard, upper and lower views on the rear covers, illustrating typical factory applied camouflage, serial and stencil applications, along with expanded notes. All main colour profiles in the new book have re been reproduced to one thirty second scale. That's what I was telling you earlier. And you can see here we've got all this beautiful stencil. You've got descriptions of what each part is. It's telling you what all the um, German, you know, the, the, the German words mean which is really nice. And then going over onto the back page, you've got the upper view there, which is giving you um, all three wings, the stenciling on there, um, underside lower wing tip, iron cross on lower wing up, applied on clear dope panel. So um, a scratch on there. Just shows how good quality it is. It's actually managed to get a scratch on it. So there we go. Um, very, very nice book indeed well worth the money it costs 30 pounds um to buy which you may say god that's a lot but the way i look at things these days you look at something and think blimey that's expensive but when you think like a bottle of ketchup now is four pounds um a frozen pizza is a fiver a gallon of petrol is more than six pounds you know is three pounds really a lot for all the work that's going into this no it's not so sorry 30 pounds um it's not so, you know, it, it's just, uh, I, I just think everything's getting expensive these days and everything seems expensive because everything costs so much. My local dog groomer is closing down at Christmas because she can no longer afford her electric bills. Um, I was talking to a friend who runs a little garage. Not, it's not a garage, it's a little uh, tuning shop, actually. And um, two years ago, his electric was like £76 a month and now it's 400 a month. Yeah, work it out guys these companies have got to keep going and we've got to keep supporting them so uh, yeah if you want to get yourself one you can get it from here um, you can see I've highlighted bits that I wanted to talk about here so you can get it from there from windsockdatafilespecials.co.uk um, it's published by Alb Albatross Production Limited and there's their phone number and their address so yeah go get yourself one it's um, well worth having and it's a fantastic it's not like, like I do the wing leader books and their photo archives and their fantastic reference material. This is also fantastic reference material, as is volume one. But this is also, you know, stuff like this, your bit by bit guide on how to build models. You know, this is how to build the cockpit in the 124th kit. It's just, it's invaluable to, you know, to everyone. The most experienced modelers will gain from this. It's absolutely beautiful. On that subject, if you want to get the 124 scale kit, uh, Hanans have got it, it's currently got it on special offer. Um, you can get the, oh, is it M MMQ003, I think it's called, the depart number from Meng. Um, there's the 003 and the 003S. The 003S, I believe, is on special offer at the moment. Um, and you can get it for the same price as the 003, but it's got a big metal um, iron cross in it. So, you know, worth looking at if you want to get one. It's also available on um, the standard kit is available on. Uh, oh, no, sorry. That's the Merit kit I'm looking at. You can get a Merit 124th, which won't be as nice as the main. So there we go. But the main is available on Hanans. The, as I say, M, I think it's MM. QS or something, MMQS 0, go and have a look, put in Meng 124th scale, it'll come up, you've got the standard kit which is 003 uh, and that's 79.99 and you've got the MMQS or MMQ003S whatever it is and that one is also 70.99 on special offer, there's only about 8 available at that price 
Um, but it's 79.99 and that one comes with the Iron Cross. So you may as well get that one. And uh, there we go. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've certainly enjoyed reviewing it. Massive thank you to Ray for uh, for sending it to me. And if you're watching Richard, that's beautiful. Well done. So um, I'll see you all soon. Go get yourself one. Bye for now.